Good day everyone. Today I'm going to discuss to you about sampling distribution of the sample mean. So, what are the steps on how are we going to find the mean variance and standard deviation of the sampling distribution of the sample mean? First, we need to find the total number of possible samples by applying combination using capital letter N for population size and small letter A for sample size. Second, list all the sample and find the mean of each sample. Third, write all the means of each sample in ascending order. Fourth, construct a probability distribution table. And the last one will be use the same table and formula in finding mean and variance of discrete random variable. Let's start. The problem is a population consists of five values. 2 pesos, 3 pesos, 4 pesos, 5 pesos, and 6 pesos. A sample of size 2 is to be taken from this population. Find the mean, variance, and standard deviation of the given problem. So what are we going to do is to start knowing the value of n or the population. The population is equal to 5 because we have, so we have this one. So we have 2 pesos. 3 pesos, 4 pesos, 5 pesos, and 6 pesos. So therefore, your population is equal to 5. How about your sample size? Your sample size is equal to 2. That's the reason why we have equals to 2. So by applying the combination method, we have NCR 5, 2. Therefore, we have equal to 10. So therefore, we need to have the total number of samples that we need to have is equal to 10. So paano natin ngayon na alamin or how are we going to know the sample. So, to know the sample, we're going to draw or make a tree diagram. So, let's write first our n is equal to 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So, what are we going to do? We're going to write 2, and then we're going to partner the numbers 3, 4, 5, 6 on 2. Now, 3, 4, 5, and then 6. After that, we're going, we're done with 2, so we're going to proceed with 3. So 3, so we're going to have 4, 5, 6. So we're done with 3, so we're going to proceed with 4. So we're going to 4, 5, 6. And then we're done with 4, so therefore the last one will be 5, 6. So after that, we're going to identify the partner. So we have 2, 3, 2, 4. 2, 5, 2, 6, 3, 4, 3, 5, 3, 6, 4, 5, 4, 6, and the last one is 5, 6. Let's count. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So therefore, we already have 10 total number of samples. So, na-reach na natin yung sa letter A kasi kung 9 lang yung nakuha mo, ibig sabihin kulang pa. Kasi according to our letter A, our first step, kailangan maka-list down tayo ng 10 sample. If kulang pa siya, kailangan mong hanapin ano pa yung kulang mong partner. After that, what are we going to do is this one. List down all the sample and then we're going to have the mean. How are we going to find the mean? So, we will just simply add 2 plus 3 and that's equal to 5, then divided by 2, the answer is 2.5. 2 plus 4 is 6, plus divided by 2 is equal to 3. 2 plus 5 is equal to 7, divided by 2 is 3.5. 2 plus 6 is 8, divided by 2 is 4. 3 plus 4 is 7, divided by 2 is 3.5. 3 plus 5 is 8, divided by 2 is 4. 3 plus 6 is 9, divided by 2 is 4.5. 4 plus 5 is 9 divided by 2 is 4.5. 4 plus 6 is 9 divided 4 plus 6 is 10 divided by 2 is 5. And 5 plus 6 is, is equal to 11. So divided by 2, the answer is 5.5. So bakit po natin siya divide sa 2? Because we add two numbers, therefore, to get the average, we need to divide that by 2. After knowing the mean, we're going to rewrite the mean in this manner. We're going to write x4 is equal to 2.5, 3, 3.54, 4.55, and 5.5. Sir, bakit hindi na ulit yung 3.54 at 4.5 dito sa letter C? 
kasi isang best lang po natin isusulat yung mean. So ngayon, after that, we're going to have B. We're going to have, we're going to count how many 2.5 are there in the mean. So mabibilang natin, we only have 1, 2.5. How many 3? So we have 1. How many 3.5? We have 2. 1, 2. How many 4? We have 1, 2. How many 4.5? We have 1, 2. How many 5? We have 1. And how many 5.5? We only have 1. So that's the reason why the frequency is 1, 1, 2, 2, 2, 1, 1. And the total frequency is equal to 10. Now, to find the probability, we we'll just simply um, follow the formula frequency over total. Your frequency is 1 and your total is 10. So therefore, your frequency is 1 over 10. So therefore, for 3, the probability is 1 over 10. Here, the probability is 2 over 10. 2 over 10. 2 over 10, 1 over 10, and 1 over 10. Okay? So, now, after that, we're going to have this table. So, for this table, we just simply copy the x bar and the probability of x bar. So, now, to um, simplify x bar times p of x bar, we just simply multiply 2.5 times 1 over 10. If we're going to multiply this, we just simply multiply 2.5 by the numerator 1 and copy the denominator. So 2.5 times 1 is 2.5. So therefore, x bar times p of x bar is 2.5 over 10. The same thing with this. 3 times 1, we have 3. So therefore, we have 3 over 10. So now, 2.5 times 2, we have 7. So therefore, we have 7 over 10. The same thing with 4 times 2, we have 8. So we have 8 over 10. 4.5 times 2 is equal to 9 over 10. Then 5 times 1 is 5. And then, copy natin yung denominator na 10. So, 5.5 times 1 is 5.5, then copy the denominator 10. After that, we're going to have x bar squared. To find the value of x bar squared, we just simply multiply x bar by itself. So, for 2.5, we have 2.5 times 2.5, we have 6.25. 3 times 3, this is 2.5. 3 times 3 is 9. 3.5 times 3.5, we have 12.25. 4 times 4, which is equal to 16. 4.5 times 4.5, we have 20.25. 5 times 5, which is equal to 25. 5.5 times 5.5, which is equal to 30.25. After that, to find the last column, we multiply the fourth column to the second column. So we multiply 6.25 by 1 over 10. 9 times 1 over 10. 12.25 times 2 over 10 until we reach 30.25 times 1 over 10. And we arrive with this one. Okay. Now, the next process is we need to add all the numbers or um, values on x bar times p of x bar column. So as you can see, pare-parehas na yung denominator. Therefore, we will just simply add all the numerator. So 2.5 plus 3 is 5.5. Plus 7 is 12.5, plus 8 is 20.5, plus 9 is 29.5, plus 5 is 34.5, and plus 5.5, we have 40. So 40 over 10, which is equal to 4. So therefore, the value of your mean is equal to 4. To find x bar squared times p of x bar, or the summation of that column, we will just simply again add all the numerators, and then copy the denominator. And the result is 167.5 over 10, which is equal to 16.75. Now, after that, we're going to follow the formula. For mean, we have mean is equal to the expected value, or E of x is equal to summation of x bar times P of x bar. So, mean is equal to 4, or mu is equal to 4. So, we just simply copy the summation of x bar times P of x bar, or the summation on the third column. After that, we're going to find the variance. To find the variance, we will be having sigma squared is equal to the summation of x bar squared times p of x bar minus mu squared. So we will just simply substitute the value of summation of x bar squared times p of x bar, which is equal to 16.75. We're going to substitute 4. Instead of writing mu, we're going to write 4 squared. Now, 16.75 minus 4 squared, we have sigma squared, which is equal to 0 0.75. Now, to find the standard deviation, we have sigma is equal to the square root of the variance. 
So our variance is equal to 0 0.75. So the square root of 0 0.75 is equal to 0 0.87. So therefore, the value of your standard deviation is equal to 0 0.87. Now, let's try another example. The given table shows the monthly income in thousands of pesos of the officers in a government office. Suppose that the sample size is 3, find the mean, variance, and standard deviation of the sampling distribution of the sample mean. So the table, we have 5 officers, and here is their salary. So now, what are we going to do? Let's identify the value of N or the population. As you can see, we're dealing with 5 officers. So therefore, our population is 5. And your N or small capital, small letter N, or what they call the sample size, is equal to 3. So therefore, using the combination method, we have 5C3, should be 5C3, is equal to 10. So therefore, we need to list down 10 samples. So we need to list down 10 samples. So we, we, I already listed all the samples. So paano natin nakuha yung 8, 12, 16, up to 16, 20, 24? So we have N, which is equal to 8, 12, 16, 20, and 24. So what are we going to do? We're going to start pairing. So we have, since by 3 yung sample size natin. So we have 8, 12, and then pa-partner natin yung 16, 20, and 24. Next, we're going to partner 8 and 16. So we have 8, 16. Partner natin yung 20 and 24. After that, we have 8, 20. And then ipa-partner natin yung 24. So we're done. Hindi na tayo pwede mag-824 kasi wala na tayong ipapartner. So we're going to proceed with 12. So we have 12, 16, 20, 24. After that, we're going to have 12, 20, and then 24. And the last one will be 16, 20, and then 24. Then list down natin, we're going to have 8, 12, 16. Then 8, 12, 20. 8, 12, 24. 8, 16, 24, 8, 16, 20, sorry, rather, here is 8, 16, 24, we have 8, 20, 24, here we have 12, 16, 24, 20, rather, here is 12, 16, 24, we have 12, 20, 24, and the last one will be 16, 20, and 24. So we already listed all the sample. Now we're going to find the mean. To find the mean, we're going to add the given sample and then divide by 3. So for instance, we have 8 plus 12 is 20 plus 16 is 36 divided by 3. Why we divide by 3? Because our sample size is 3. So therefore, the answer is 12. 8 plus 12 is 20 plus 20 we have 40 divided by 3 we have 13.3. Until we reach 16 plus 20 plus 24, that's equal to 60 divided by 3, the answer is 20. Now, the next part will be rewriting all the mean. We have 12, 13.33, 14.67, 16, 17.33, 18.67, and 20. Now, we're going to count the number of 12 on the given mean. Uh, therefore, we're going to have frequency. For the frequency, we have 1, 12, 1, 13.33, 2, 14.67, 2, 16, 2, 17.33, 1, 18.67, and 120. To find the probability, so the total of this one is equal to 10. So we just simply copy the frequency 1 all over 10. So we have 1 over 10, 1 over 10, 2 over 10. 2 over 10, 2 over 10, 1 over 10, and 1 over 10. Now, after that, we're going to um, complete the given table for mean variance and standard deviation of the sampling distribution of the sample mean. So we have this one. So to find x bar times p of x bar, we just simply multiply 12 by 1 over 10. So if we're going to multiply that, we just simply multiply 12 by the numerator 1, which is equal to 12. And then copy the denominator 10. Again, we have 13.33 times 1 over 10. We just simply multiply 13.33 times 1 or the numerator, which is equal to 13.33. And then copy the denominator 10. 14.67 times 1 over 10 is 
times 2 over 10. So we just simply multiply 14.67 by the numerator 2. We have 29.34 all over 10. So 16 times 2 over 10, we just simply multiply 16 by the numerator 2. The answer is 32. And then copy the denominator 10. 17.33 times 2 over 10, we just simply multiply 17.33 by the numerator 2, which is 34.66, and then copy the denominator 10. 18.67 times 1 over 10, we have 18.67 over 10. And 20 times 1 over 10, we have 20 over 10. Now, to find the x-bar squared column, we need to multiply the x-bar by itself. So that's the reason why 12 times 12, we have 144. 13.33, which is equal to 177.69. 14.67 times 14.67, we have 215.21. 16 times 16, we have 256. 17.33 times 17.33, we have 300.33. 18.67 times 18.67, we have 348.57. And 20 times 20, we have 400. Now, to find x bar squared times p of x bar, we need, we need to multiply the x bar squared column times p of x bar. So we need to multiply 144 by 1 over 10, we have 144 over 10. 177.69 times 1 over 10, we have 177.69 over 10. 215.21 times 2 over 10, we need to multiply 215.21 by 2, which is the numerator, that's 430.42, then copy the denominator 10. 256 times 2 over 10, we need to multiply 256 by the numerator 2, the answer is 512. Then copy the denominator 10. 300.33 times 2 over 10, we need to multiply 300.33 by the numerator 2, we have 600.66, and copy the denominator 10. Then 348.57 times 1 over 10, we have 3.57 over 10, and 400 times 1 over 10, we have 400 over 10. Now, the next part is adding all the values on x bar times p of x bar column. As you can see, we have the same denominator, therefore we will just simply add all the numerator. Adding all the numerator will result to 160 and then copy the denominator 10. 160 divided by 10 is equal to 16. Therefore, the value of our mean is equal to 16. To find the x bar squared times p of x bar summation of this column, we need to add all the numerators and then copy the denominator since all the values or all the fractions are similar. Adding all the numerators, we have 2613.34 and then copy the denominator 10. So dividing that, we have 261.334. Now, the value of mean is equal to 16. Why? We just simply copy the value of summation of x bar times p of x bar or the summation of the third column. Now, to find the variance, we just simply substitute Summation of x bar squared times p of x bar, which is equal to 261.334, then bring down minus. Instead of writing mu, we're going to write 16. So therefore, we're going to write 16 squared. So 261.334 minus 16 squared, the result is equal to sigma squared, which is equal to 5.334. So therefore, the variance is equal to 5.334. Now, to find the standard deviation, we need to get the square root of the variance, and our variance is 5.334. Getting the square root of that, we have the standard deviation or the sigma, which is equal to 2.31. So, that's all. Thank you, and I hope you've learned a lot for today's discussion. Don't forget to subscribe on our channel, hit the notification bell button para um, updated kayo sa mga video tutorial namin. Thank you, and God bless everyone.